Charity Easter Edition 2015. Me, your host, Cal Leslie, and TJ Azuma QT Sanders casting for you. And we have one match left of our round of 16, TJ. We're nearly halfway through the day. It's uh, a long day. We've got the round, of, the quarterfinal round to come, and we just have one spot left in our quarterfinals, and it's the match that many of you have been waiting for. It's Forsen versus Oleg. Yeah, this this should be a good match. Um, it's sort of one of the most popular Hearthstone players right now. Maybe not the most successful in regards to uh, tournament places. Uh, he did play, finish top eight at Body Game House Cup. Um, he, and uh, semifinals of the first one. Semifinals of the first one, yeah. Yep. So that tournament has treated him well. Uh, Oliak is a little bit of an unknown player. Not many people really know who he is. He's on uh, the team uh, Punchline Esports Club. Uh, which we saw his teammate Ekta uh, play yesterday. Unfortunately, he lost. So he's the the only one repping the Punchline Esports Club uh, flag right now. So I'm, I'm sure he's going to want to avenge his fallen brother and uh, and try and, and take that victory. Um, but Forsen, uh, oh man, it, it's he's one of the most successful Hearthstone streamers, uh, but he's yet to have a really huge tournament breakout performance. And he keeps getting invited back and back to these tournaments. And I'm really waiting for that one day where he actually does just go all the way to the finals and, and take it for, for all of his fans. But it's going to be a tough road ahead of him. Yeah, well, the thing about Forsen fans is they don't really mind whether or not it's uh, a glorious victory or a humiliating loss. They enjoy it all the same. And uh, you can see Forsen is actually the only player in the tournament bringing Shaman. Um, we'll see how that works out for him. I hope it's Felry or Shaman because that could be... That could be a fun time. But uh, we do have the class lineups for you. We'll bring you to you in just a second. Again, like with uh, Ekta yesterday, I did get a chance to speak to Oleg uh, a couple of days ago, find out a little bit more about him. He has a background in poker, uh, as well as being diamond level in League of Legends. So, you know, he's knows his way around gaming and knows his way around card games as well. Uh, he's been top 100 in, in the EU legend ranking seven times. So uh, he's a very accomplished ladder player. He's a big fan. His favorite class is Hunter. His favorite card is Leroy. So I suspect uh, he's not actually brought Hunter today. So we're not going to see the face Hunter. Um, but yeah, he's been with Punchline for eight months. They all, all the players train together and try and make each other better. It's a, apparently a really collaborative team where they all work really hard to help each other. So he's going to be prepared really well for this tournament. Like I said with Ekta, uh, you know, these guys, this is a huge opportunity for them. For many, for streamers like Forsen, this is just another tournament for many of the established players. It's just another online invitational. But for players like Oli Connecta, this is their chance for a big breakout performance. They've never appeared in a major tournament before, and this is a chance for them to really stake their claim. And if he could uh, get a victory in what's likely to be our most watched match of the round of 16 as well, with all the Forsen fans, that'd be a, a pretty big statement for Oli. Yeah, definitely. And looking at their deck list, their deck lineups right now, um, I actually like the lineup of um, of Oliak just a little bit more. Oliak has Mage Druid Warlock, um, which I, I talked about it earlier. I think um, um, Mage Druid Warlock and Rogue are probably the three most uh, popular classes, or the three strongest classes uh, in the the current meta right now. All right, we're back. Are we back? Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. Skype has its problems, obviously. And we're uh, getting ourselves sorted back here as we prepare for forcing. And I can see that, uh, oh dear, chat has already been invaded with the cancer from Forsen and they're ready for him but uh he's bringing warrior mage and shaman which is an interesting choice of lineup we saw warrior uh earlier on being interesting but uh shaman is going to be interesting as well we'll see if he's bringing a kind of fell reaver shaman or if he's bringing anything else we'll wait and see what kind of shaman it is that Forsen has decided to bring uh he does play a lot of freeze mage um that was the tour the 
the deck that served him very well the first five game house cup um who knows forcing could just be bringing three complete troll decks yeah <clears throat> and um shaman is a pretty underrepresented class right now uh, not only in competitive play but also on ladder uh it's there are some players who think Shaman's a lot stronger than it is. There are a lot of players who navigate Shaman to high legend ranks. There's a lot of players who navigate Shaman uh, in tournaments pretty well. Uh, the Taiwanese players especially, um, Roger, uh, Tom, Pinping Ho, uh, Frozen Ice. These guys are, are players that really um, practice with Shaman a lot and they played a lot. It's sort of a different environment over there when it comes to playing the underrepresented classes. Um, now, as far as uh, shaman goes in like North America and Europe people haven't really had much success the thing about shaman is you can't really make mistakes uh, you have a lot less wiggle room than when it, then it comes to other decks because you're a lot less consistent you make one mistake on a turn and even though you may not notice it it's what snowballs the game and it's what contributes to shamans maybe having a, a little bit less of a uh, of uh, of a showing in these competitive environments so uh, it's really bold move by forcing to bring shaman We'll see if it pays off. He is the only player out of all 16 players I've seen so far to bring Shaman. It's a lot of players in the tournament, a lot of chances for players to bring Shaman, and he's the only one. So does that mean we've seen? Does that mean we've seen all nine classes? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Well, thank you, Forson, for ensuring that we were able to get all nine classes. He's uh, yeah, working hard for us to get that. So you know, Forson doing his bit to make sure we see all the classes represented. Wants to stand up for the underrepresented. Shaman, but what we're going to see in the first match, we're actually going to see uh, a, sh a mage mirror match, which is the one deck that these two have uh, in common. So, be interesting to see what uh, archetypes they're bringing, what Oleg has for us in his lineup, Mage, Druid, and Warlock, and we'll see uh, what Forsen's bringing. I wouldn't be surprised if it is a uh, a freeze mage. He's been known as a freeze mage player, but he you never you never know what Forsen's going to bring really. Yeah. It, it, he brings whatever he, he feels like playing that day. It's not like he's been he like specifically practices decks for that tournament. It's, it's whatever he feels uh, he's gonna the deck he's gonna play the best with those days. And I mean his lineup's pr pretty good. I, I, I said earlier I like Oleg's uh, deck lineup better because um, it feels like it's more consistent. But the thing about bringing something new in Conquest is that your opponent doesn't know what to expect. Uh, it, it sort of plays with their head a little bit and, and what deck they, they should bring out first thing uh, because they, they don't really know what to expect. He doesn't know what kind of Shaman it would be. Uh, it being Forsen as well, he doesn't really know what kind of Warrior it will be either. I wouldn't put it past Forsen to bring a, to play a Grim Patron Warrior as well, which we saw from Shaggy. saw how successful Shockey. that was, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's going to be tough to tell who's going to come out on top of this matchup. Uh, if I had to say just by the deck lineups, of course, like I said, I'd say Oleg, but stranger things have happened and or it looks like we are about to jump into the match yeah let's get into it here forson versus Oli. game number one it's a mage mirror match <laughs> mage mirror match now this a lot of it depends on uh the archetypes of these mages judging by the uh these these mulligans it looks like it's going to be mech mage versus freeze mage well, I don't know. I mean, the, it could well be a Tempo Mage on the bottom there for Oli. Just seeing the it's mirror possible. entities and the Frostbolt. It's, until we see actually see a mech, I wouldn't be convinced it's a mech yet. Uh, definitely a Freeze Mage for Forsen, though. That's pretty much that. Yeah, so you can see the Mech Warper. It's going to be Mech Mage versus Freeze Mage. We saw this uh, earlier, and probably the Freeze Mage has an advantage here. Yeah. Freeze Mage, I think, has a small advantage, but Mech Mage can still have blowout victories. Um, if they get high, ramped up early, if the Ooh. Freeze Mage doesn't draw into Freeze early on or stall. Look at Oleg throwing out the, uh, the, sh the, the emotes already. Threatening Forsen. Oleg looks ruthless. He's not afraid of the big name here. He's out for blood. He's here to take a scalp. That Tinker Time Detonation on turn three is pretty great. Feel the tension. <laughs> you can you can cut the tension with a with a knife right now. It's thick. Punishes. For, forcing there. forcing definitely looks tense. He doesn't look completely relaxed as always. Looks like he's chewing his gum along with a a song. Like a he's chewing with his mouth open, which I have to say, my mother would definitely not appreciate. 
my mother would not be a forcing boy right now. Well, Forsen's mother encourages it, so this must be a different, different culture. <laughs> That's true. It's yeah, different, different culture, different foreign lands, different customs. So this is a, actually a pretty decent start for, <clears throat> um, for Forsen. I, I talked about it earlier. What Freeze Mage wants is they want draw into freeze into burn. Like that's the. That's sort of the the nature of of the deck. You want to be able to draw into a lot of answers early. You want to be able to have freeze in the mid game to deal with boards, freeze doom series, and then the late game you want to draw into your burn to be able to finish out the game. Um, he's got <clears throat> draw already, which is good. Uh, he's got Emperor Thorstein, which is fantastic, and he already has like more draw in his hand to be able to refill with double acolyte of pain. So this is a, a spot that you, you definitely want to be in. And taking out the Mech Warper instead of like playing Arcane Intellect. Um, is probably the best situation here, just because you don't want him to ramp further than he is, and you want to take away the mix synergy as early as you possibly can. Yeah, absolutely. So the 4-4 four, four is still remaining on the board for Oleg, and uh, Forsen does have double Acolyte of Pain in his hand, as well as uh, Arcane Intellect as well, so he definitely has some options, but this 4-4 four, four is a little problematic. He's thinking about whether or not to drop Mad Scientist, I guess. It's really hard, because the mirror entities can so often be a liability in this matchup because there's a higher probability really of you getting a doomsayer than there is of getting something useful. Yeah, you have to put as as much power on the board as possible right now. The battle cry from the Goblin Blast Mage is really powerful. But you can't afford to wait to put damage on the board. It just doesn't make much sense. This doomsayer is going to stop it in its tracks though. <clears throat> um, and he pretty much can guarantee <clears throat> that that doomsayer is going to stick. Because turn 5, there's... I don't think there's any way Meg Mage can deal with that, aside oh. from if he got the uh, Reverser Switch uh, spare part, that would be the only way he could do it. Well, that, that would be. Uh, you can see the emotes flying back and forth between these two. It's the first time we've really seen any emoting all day. Um, Force and not phased <laughs> by, by any BM or emotes, and Bolik, I guess, trying to play a little bit of mind games. Not sure that's a smart strategy. There you go. <laughs> Forcing doing his Annoyatron impression for all of us there. It's pretty good. Nothing like a fresh noose followed by some emotes, spam. Sounds like a party to me. <laughs> I mean, I guess there's nothing wrong with doing the with pinging your own clockwork gnome here and seeing if you get the reversing switch. Uh, what else are you going to do? Just pass the turn. I think you need that mech synergy to proc the Tinkertown Technician. That's true. Um, in case you're not guaranteed to draw into one next turn. It's a little bit unfortunate, um, but you can't really <laughs> rely on getting a reverse switch in order to deal with Doomsayers. That's not a reliable way to do it. Uh, it's also, it came out a turn before he was able to fire fireball and ping, which is really tough, because now he's got to build his board back over again. A lot of times, what happens with mech mages is that uh, against control, more controly type decks, once their first sort of uh, onslaught is stopped, a lot of times they, they can't gain a big enough board quick enough to be able to close it out. It's the same way when they play against Handlock. One Shadow Flame or Hellfire early on can just shut them out of the game. Yeah, so Thorson coming down here in turn six. Uh, nine mana Pyroblast, it's back. <laughs> it was never nine mana, was it? It was eight mana. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Eight mana power blast. Yeah. It's so gotta it's, live uh, for one more turn in order to be back to its former glory. That's all we need to this is the unnerfer, Emperor Thorison. Yeah. Oh, there's a, the reversing switch uh, did come off the Tinker Town technician, which is a little bit unfortunate. <laughs> Could have used that earlier. <laughs> yeah. Gets a mech yeti here, which is a card that a lot of people have been cutting from Mech Mage. It's uh some people see it as too slow or not get, not offering enough in terms of uh, board presence as well, uh, cutting it in favor of some more some more some quicker cards that they can use. But uh, Oli is still favoring it here. We did see the pilot sky golem earlier, uh, and Muzzy's mech mage as well. I did some pretty extensive testing last season with um, with mech mage, and I found out that um, I had the most success with running one mechanical yeti and one Tinker Town technician uh as as like tech cards um 
uh, two piloted shredders, one mechanical yeti, um, two spider tanks, one tinker top technician as my three and four drops. So, um, I like mechanical yeti. The spare part is actually really decent. Having as many spare parts as possible allows you to have more control over the board, especially earlier on. And there's some spare parts that are just really, really game changers. If you can get a um, the cloak field, the finicky cloak field, combined with Antonidas, it almost guarantees you wins in a lot of situations. Yeah. So more chances at spare parts is sure. definitely not a bad thing. Well, there's a golden cloak field. <laughs> Nothing really to use it on, though. Dr. Boom, though, not uh, not the worst thing that you could use in this situation. Yeah, that's not too bad. But Dr. Boom's going to come down. Is another Frost Nova. So he could freeze up this board again. Does a Flame Strike as well. Lots of options for Force and Tans at the board. Let's see what he decides to do here. Dr. Boom, oftentimes in this sort of position, would feel like an autoplay, but he's hesitating with his, his golden Dr. Boom. What do you think is the argument against Dr. Boom here? Just being afraid of Flame Strike and Freeze and Doomsayer? I think that's what he's thinking about here. Uh, because he could ping off the Loot Order and uh, like play Mechanical Yeti. Uh, Mirror Entity is a no-go. <laughs> Mirror Entity probably will not be played. Mad Scientist is also a liability. Because uh, you play Doomsayer in a Mirror Entity, you're, it's a guaranteed board clear. Yeah. It's in the same vein as uh, sometimes you got, you want to hold back on playing Sylvanas in the late game against a, against a Freeze Mage that hasn't used both Doomsayers. Because they can uh, fire, they play Doomsayer, fireball your Sylvanas, force them to steal your Doomsayer and get their board cleared so blizzard coming off the arcane intellect is pretty good means he has two aoe's in hand still and the, puts the frost nova out as well so not even just one aoe left in his hand after playing one this turn so he can freeze and then frost and then fire uh flame strike he can draw cards too with his acolytes of pain it's gonna be a pretty powerful turn next turn for for forcing yeah i mean he can I guess run his acolytes into the bombs, draw cards. Hope one of them hits his loot hoarder as well to draw another card. I wonder if it's hard to hear through his headphones, through his hood. I guess. In not. my experience from living in really cold student flats, it's not that it's not that difficult if you turn it up loud enough. We've all been there when you can't afford the heating yeah, when you're a co when you're a college student. I've had a cushy life. Yeah, I guess uh, living in the west in the west coast is uh, a little bit a little bit nicer than the winters in Scotland, I guess. Yeah, I live in San Diego. It never gets below sixty degrees. <laughs> heat? What is heat? Don't need heat or central air. It's How like very the best cheap. Of both worlds. Sounds like a cheap way to live. I was thinking about the Thalnos flame strike here because it kills the Mech Yeti. I think we can actually kill the Dalter Boom really easily as well. Yeah, so Thalnos Flame Strike. It's gonna clear this board. So powerful. Such a powerful yeah. turn. Are you just gonna give him a card? Yeah, and I mean I talked about it earlier. Once a mech mage loses their first board, a lot of times it's hard for them to build a board big enough to come back in the game. Uh, once they lose their second board, they're pretty much out of it. Because you look at the hand right now, he's got spells and spare parts. Ooh. That's it. That's all he has. And now see this is where it is. Draw, then freeze, then burn. That's how you need to do it. He drew, then he froze, now he's gonna burn. That's, that's... <laughs> he spams the email. <laughs> well played. I, I gotta say, Oli cannot be annoyed at Forrest and spamming emotes because he started it. Yeah. So it's you did ask for it. Forrest is guess... the best Jaina role player that I have ever seen. That is true. Uh he's, he's even gonna wearing be the hood. He's <laughs> trying to He's trying his hardest to be to be Jaina right now. And tonight is with some spare parts here. Uh, yeah, See, this is the finicky cloak field, um, and this is a, about the only way he'll he'll have a chance at winning. Um, having spells is the best way to do it because you can play around ice barrier, which is a big thing. And he's actually got a lot of damage in his hand. It's just going to have to come over a couple turns. Um, and. That's 
14 plus 4, 18. Uh, how much damage did you start with? That could be lethal. Not quite. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wasn't no, it really is. Yeah, counting. It is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and the oh no, he's one off. <laughs> yeah, he's one off. <laughs> of course. Oh jeez. He has to be one off lethal. Yeah. Wouldn't be forcing if he wasn't one damage off lethal. Yeah, but he's got he's got ice block up. Um, I think uh, he did have a secret up. I don't remember which one it actually was. Um, I don't think we even saw it because it came out of a mad scientist, but he's going to try his best here. He's going to try and throw the fireballs out, but... Um, Infinite fireballs! Yeah, there's nothing he can do. Ping his own face would be the best way to go out. Not give Force yep. satisfaction. And there we go, Force is going to take game one with the Freeze <laughs> Mage. Oh, man. Well, Oleg... Oleic... Get, look, giving up the victory that Force and the Freeze Mage gained the win that it was probably favored to do. And now Force will go on to the Warrior or the Shaman. Oleg does, of course, have Mage, Druid, and Warlock remaining. Um, it's it's kind of difficult. I think if Forsen is bringing the Fell Reaver Shaman, I actually think that that's a pretty good matchup against Mech Mage. Uh, usually in Conquest, you'll see player, players save their strongest decks for last or the decks that they perceive to be the strongest for last. Uh, and they'll throw out their weak decks first to try and get the the wins out of the way with their weak decks. Or, um, if we're throwing a weak decks out there first and having them get beat by a strong deck is actually sometimes a good thing. Because if your opponent uses one of their stronger decks first and beats you with it, that opens up more opportunities for you to counterpick because it lessens the amount of decks that your opponent has uh, for you for you to choose to play against. Um, Forsen, it, it seems like he decided to do the opposite. He threw out his, what he perceives to be a strong deck first, and now he's got to clean up wins with his weaker decks to, to close out the series. So yeah. Oleg still has a couple strong decks left, um, whereas Forsen, we still haven't seen the Shaman. I don't know how it's going to work out. I don't know what kind of Shaman it even is. Uh, so we'll have to see. Um, Oleg already has locked in the Mage, so he's going to try and give it another go with the Mech Mage. What are we going to see from Force in here? I'd like to see the Shaman. Uh, I think it is. Pr I, I do think it's a good matchup against Mech Mage because I think the Fell Reaver comes out early, and the Mech Mage has nothing it can do to deal with it. Um, you could things like the. Oh, okay, so Force is going to go to the Warrior. So it's really. I, I would say I don't know if it is a Mech Shaman. So it's actually really risky to play against a Mech Mage. I would think. Yeah. If they I get any so. spare parts early, if they get the free spare part, you lose. You basically lose. Because they can free spare part, plus play one, maybe even two more cards with six mana as a mech mage. Then the next turn, they're going to burn at least 15 cards of your deck and block the 8 damage from coming in. So if he's playing Fell River Shaman, I actually wouldn't want to match up against mech mage just because of the fact that spare parts can just completely screw you over. But uh, he's going to play for you. I think with the, the Fell River Shaman, you can snowball really well. But obviously, we don't even know if he's playing Fell River Shaman. Even a Noiltron, having to put 8 damage yeah, into a Noiltron... You play it in Orochon, it basically just completely negates Bow Reaver. It's such a risky card. Well, I like it, it, and it can be surprising, but... Whew. In this matchup, if it is a standard control warrior, which I think is pretty likely, an early snow chugger from Oleg here could be absolutely killer. Yeah. That would be, yeah, that would be not what Forsen wanted to see. And if he can, if Oleg can just freeze the face over and over and over again, even for three or, for three or four turns, the game's pretty much over at that point. So, yeah. but having said that, I see commanding shout. Uh, this could be a combo warrior. Yeah, this definitely could be. This could be something. It could be Grim Patron Warrior. Commanding shout means that you can uh, pretty much have infinite Grim Patrons, right? <laughs> well, seven. <laughs> well, then you, you sack them in, and then you can spawn more. You can't sack them in with commanding. Oh no. God. Yeah. No, no infinite grim patrons. Commanding shout. I don't like commanding shout, actually. Having, uh, having I've, played a bit with your patron warrior, I'm not a fan of it. I think it, like you see, I think the ability to sack them in and spawn more is actually <laughs> kind of crucial a lot of the time. There, there's a very crucial emote battle happening right now. There's the early snow chugger. It is, <laughs> it is turn one, and uh, Forsen's gonna rope out. <laughs> Emote. I wonder what's going through Forsen's mind right now. 
This is next level mind games. I, I don't have advanced enough thinking to be able to tell the strategy yeah. behind these intense mind games that Forsen is producing. I think, yeah, Forsen is just letting him have it at this point. Well, okay, Oliek is a relatively unknown player. He does have some experience, but uh, not quite as much, at least on in larger scale events. And uh, there's a chance that he might be susceptible to tilt. Now, we don't know for sure if this is a Grim Patron Warrior. I mean, I'm sure it is, but there have been some combo warrior decks or some aggressive warrior decks that actually have been running without Grim Patron. Grim Patron is just sort of a way to um, have a more consistent way to combo something. Uh, I've played quite a bit of Grim Patron Warrior the past couple of days, and uh, sometimes I win without Grim Patron. Sometimes I'll have big combo turn yeah. with just uh, Frothing Berserkers. <clears throat> but sometimes I'll have a big, just be able to do so much damage early on, be able to close them out with like a Grom Hellscream or something like that. So it, it's, it doesn't, you don't necessarily have to have a Grim Patron be able to combo, uh, but um, it's more than likely going to be the case in the situation. All right, so Forsen clearing the board early and getting a 7-2 Frothing Berserker already. And has Commanding Shout as well for next turn to trade with stuff that's getting pretty scary already. Commanding Shout, not that great of a card against Mage. Because yeah. usually you're gonna, when you Commanding Shout, you're going to put whatever creature you have on the board to one health, and they're just going to ping it off the next turn. So Noritron is, is probably a must here. Um, he can Noritron Snow Chucker and then basically guarantee that he gets a freeze off the following turn. I think that's the best line to play here. It also blocks uh, what would be seven damage, possibly even more, if he attacks with the weapon first from this Frothing and Berserker. I don't think there's really another choice. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think that's that is what he has to go for. And it's Forsen doesn't actually have a huge amount in hand. He has a kind of clunky hand with double weapon. It's not really something you want to see as a warrior is multiple weapons sitting in your hand. Yeah, um, at the same time, uh, having the weapons early and having a clunky hand full of weapons is better than have a clunky handful of combo pieces that you can't use as a warrior. Um, control warrior may not want too many weapons in their hand early on, but sometimes the only sort of removal or board presence that you can have um, as a as a combo warrior player are weapons. So I don't think he's as upset, but he would probably like to maybe only see a death bite. Slam also. Oh. That's interesting. I haven't seen Forsen play with this deck at all, so he's gonna go for the slam on the Mad Scientist. And he does. He has a cool Taskmaster for the Mirror Entity as well. Yikes. Mm. This is so so. Okay, so if he plays the Neurotron, Forsen can actually uh, cool Taskmaster in the Neurotron. Um, and clear it. And clear it. Yeah, so he can he can clear even get through an Anoyatron here. He needs something. He's just gonna play the Azure Drake. Yeah. This is a oh, lot of actually, damage. Forget that he's he's actually frozen from the snow from killing the snow chugger from. Okay, the... yeah. So you should so you probably should have played the Anoyatron then. Mm, I don't know. I think getting the the draw while you still can, knowing that he wouldn't be able to clear your Azure Drake off with a weapon, um, is was probably the better play in that scenario. He wants to save the Neurotron until he can like almost guarantee that he's going to be able to get it. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if we saw execute on this Azure yeah. Drake here because I think that's perfect because it, it props the man the procs the mirror entity as well. Yeah. Um, but in that situation. Uh, he would actually lose his Frothing Berserk in the next turn, but he would be able to put on quite a bit of damage. Oh, he's actually going to go for the Commanding Shout. Does that mean he's going to trade? I can't imagine that he'd throw 9 damage into 4 health. But... Looks like that's what he's going to do here. I'm not sure I agree with this, I think. <laughs> Only uh, giving him some... Giving a little bit of juice of his own there. The, the no. threat and emote. Um, because he, he knows that it's going to get pinged off the next turn. So, I guess uh, forcing him to use the 2 mana to ping is more important to him than doing the 9 damage to face. But, yeah, using the commanding shot to draw, you might as well try and get value out of it when you can. 
Yeah, I guess it's okay. It's gonna get painted. I mean, this frothing berserker hasn't necessarily done a much damage to face, but it's kept board control and it's uh, kept Oleg on his toes for a little while. But gonna see the Neutron come down now. There is a Grim Patron in hand. Grim Patron, if you prefer. Grim Patron. If you, if you like being wrong, Grim Patron. Grim Patron, if you like to party. It's uh, not the easiest turn here. Probably can see the Cruel Taskmaster and then clear the Anoyotron. Can then develop Death Spite if he wants. Yeah. Mech Mage can sometimes be a little bit of a liability against uh, against Grim Patron Warrior. Uh, just because they have so many creatures that have sub 3 attack. And so you, later in the game when you're getting to those turns where the Warrior can play those combo cards like Warsong Commander um, you're he's almost guaranteed to get quite a bit of value out of out of that Grim Patron because you can just charge mm -hmm. him over and over again to these two old creatures plus use the war ones what you're uh, saying is uh, everyone might get in here everyone might get in here yeah except there can only be 14 people in here so <laughs> it's uh there is yeah unless so he sacrifices his brothers Everybody get in here, and some of you die so that other people can get in here. That's basically what Grim, Grim Patron is saying. Grim Patron, the father of modern day tequila. All right, well that Doctor Boom start is uh is there as an option. Yeah, this is actually looking pretty rough for Forsen now. Um, he's starting to get low health. Uh, he's used a lot of his weapons to clear early on. He hasn't been able to get quite a bit of damage. I mean, Oleak is still sitting at 30 health, and he does have the Grim Patron, but even if he dr draws like Warsong Commander right now, he's not even guaranteed to get much. And he's actually looking at, he, he has Execute for Dr. Boom, but he's still looking at quite a bit of damage on board. And since he can't use his weapon to clear anything this turn because he's still frozen, he's in a lot of trouble. That's so rough. Yeah, not being able to clear anything is really bad. He's, he's just going to throw out Thoris in here. He's going to get a four mana Grim Patron, but... It's not, not the best use of Emperor Thorison. Oh no, not at all. And this is, this is the problem with Emperor Thorison is if you can't, you know, it is a really powerful card, but if you end up in a situation where you only have a couple of cards in your hand and they're not ones you necessarily value having lower uh, lower mana cost on, Thorison can either, you either throw it out like this and lose the, as much value or it ends up staying dead in your hand as you wait for a turd to play it, which never comes. Yeah, uh, there's, a, there's a possibility for lethal here. Um, if one of the bots hits face for, oh no, I don't think he can anymore. If he, he threw in both bots and both bots hit face for at least two damage. If, if he throws in this bot and it hits face for four, oh, okay. If he'd got the attack spare part and a bomb and hit face <laughs> for four, it would have been exactly lethal, right? Yeah, there was a couple opportunities there, but I don't think any of them are possible anymore. Uh, either way, he's still in a really great position but to close out the game. Forsen is nearly out of cards. Uh, it's actually still possible. The card draw. If this is for four. Oh. The card draw mechanic for uh, warriors, battle rage, or I guess acolyte of pain as well, are a little bit inconsistent. It's not like immediate draw. Battle rage requires you to have damaged creatures on the board, or else you're only going to draw one card. And acolyte of pain requires you to have some sort of war wonder damaging effect. And just reaping it off the top without a way to activate it right now would. I don't think there's any way that he could come out on top. Yeah, unfortunately not. He's going to be frozen with the Frostbolt as well, so he isn't able to use that Death Spite. The freeze on the Warrior is so effective. Piloted and... Shredder. This is yeah, that's really... an interesting choice. It's an interesting uh, Grim Patron deck, but um, it's it's pretty interesting. I like to see what the other 15 or so cards are in the deck. I like to see what else he decides to put in. It's a little bit different from the standard Grim Patron Warrior. Uh, but pretty interesting. So Oleg is going to tie it up 1-1, one to -one, manages to find the win with the Mech Mage. Force is still going to have to find a win with that Grim Patron Warrior sometime if he's going to want to take away the series. Absolutely. So it's 1-1 one -one now in the series, going into game number 3. The Warrior and the Shaman left for Forsen, and the Druid and the Warlock for Oleg. Um, I guess this is possibly a Zoo. Again, that feels like it's probably pretty good against the Grim Patron. Just because it can get an early win and overwhelm. Well, before the warrior is able to draw the combo pieces. I think that it's Grim, Grim Patron Warrior is actually pretty good against Zoo. Um, the, I think Zoo only has a few weaknesses right now, and one of them is Grim Patron. It is very draw dependent, like you said, 
but they don't really need combo pieces to win because they can keep the board clear with um, just with weapons. Like weapons alone, as long as they have an early fire war axe or fiery win axe, uh, they can usually be able to um, do a lot of work and clearing the board early on. And they, usually, a lot of time they have a lot of targets for Grim Pagans later in the game. And even if they just manage to, in the mid game, get a Grim Pagan on turn five with a Despite, they manage to get a couple out of that. Sometimes that's all they need to get rid of the board of Zoo and close out the game. Um, I've had a lot of success against it with Grim Pitch and Warrior, and sometimes it seems like I have a terrible early hand, and I still manage to pull it out just because of some insane things that I can do in the mid and late game. So as long as you don't get, like, killed on turn four with some crazy knife juggler, or, like a perfect start from, from Zoo, you, I think it's it's pretty good. Uh, but this game, we won't be seeing the Warrior again. Forcing is actually, we'll actually be playing Shaman. Woo! Let's see what this Shaman is. I guess uh, just quite briefly on the Warrior before we go into this game as well. I think... It's kind of interesting because the way that the war that warrior beats the zoo is all is kind of the same way that any warrior beats zoo is that having that early the early uh solutions to those zoo problems being able to keep the board clear and then overwhelming in the mid to late game when you have the combo pieces whereas normally you would have the, the bigger minions in the late game yeah i think it's a little bit more consistent though because you have other minions to sort of soak up damage instead of like control warrior where you can get caught with like six drop plus the whole time yeah well let's get into this game here game number three it's going to be the shaman versus the druid only a chronic druid and let's see what shaman forsen is going to bring i'm excited i'm excited to see um there's really not many variations of shaman right now there's mid-range shaman and then there's mech shaman that's just about it and it looks, it looks like what we're getting well there's mech shaman and then there's mech shaman with fell reaver i think those are kind of two different variants so I guess you could argue they're just kind of different flavors of the same archetype. Yeah. I think the Fel Reaver is more of a ladder deck, though. Um, I don't know. I think it's more of a conquest deck, honestly. I think it's, is it? it's I think it's a deck which is designed to get one win in conquest. I don't think it's very consistent on ladder. It's so, it's, it's so inconsistent in a class that's already really inconsistent. Yeah. Well, that's why I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick it in ladder, but I think... I wouldn't pick it anywhere. <laughs> that's true. I would pick it in a tournament where you have to play Shaman and you have to play Fell Reaver in all of your Shaman decks. That's when I would play it. Um, but this is a this is pretty decent hand. He's got to find a way to curve out. I mean, yeah, Innervate Shade is is cool and all, but then he doesn't have a um, a play to make the following turn. I think what he can do is just pass his turn, maybe next turn coin out the Shade, and the following turn Innervate out the Piloted Shredder. Um, but either way, his curve is a little bit awkward because any play that he makes in the next two turns, he's most likely not going to have a play on one of his turns between three and five. So um, it may seem cool that he has Innervate early on, uh, but either way, he's going to run into w one awkward turn. It just depends on which turn he wants that that power dip to fall on. And so Innervating out the Shade is going to be his choice, which means next turn... Unless he draws into something like a wild growth, he's not going to have anything to play. Yeah, it's pretty rough. So, it's it's pretty hard to know what to play there. It's Obviously, you saw him rope on the turn one, which you don't often see players roping on turn one, but he was really agonizing over whether or not to play the shade. And then Forsen side. played his card be before we could even... before we could even switch to his point of view. Yeah. We might actually see the shade revealed here, just to take out this Annoitron, but he might just take the Divine Shield off. I think... <laughs> Emotes coming up from Forsen. You ha you started this, Oleg. You can't get... You can't be getting tilted now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's gonna clear this out here. It doesn't... Roll with Forsen. <laughs> this plays right into Power Mates, though, and then next turn he has the... He'll be able to clear whatever comes out, plus play his pilot trader in order and get the buff from from Power and Maze. So this is a, actually a really good start. I feel kind of bad for Oleg, but like I say, he did he did he did ask for this. Yeah. And see, this is one of those awkward turns because uh, if he coins out pilot trader this turn, the next turn he's gonna have four mana and not really much to do besides wrath and hero power, which might just be enough. But. Uh, I'm not sure how he wants to play this one out. Um, 
Hmm. I think... I think he wants to. What's going through his head is he wants to play BGH, but he's scared that if he plays BGH, there's going to be a target later on that he's going to need to BGH. Oh man, it's it's such a such an awkward way to curve out, and Hero Power is going to be his choice. Give some more options next turn. He can play Pod to Treader or Coin Out. Either one of his five drops, depending on what happens. Yeah, exactly. He wants to keep that coin. Doomhammer potentially for turn five. You can buff this power mace, buff the pilot trader with the power mace as well. Mm -hmm. Something comes down here like a sludge belcher. Just thinking, crackle and earth shock are options there as well in hand. Crackle you kind of want to keep for bursting. Earth shock could be a good answer to sludge belcher. It's a tough decision. Because drawing that Ancient of Lord gives him a really good coin option for turn six. Um, but playing Pile to Shredder right now, which is would be my my first thought, it plays right into Power Mace. Uh, whatever you get out of that Pile to Shredder, it's not going to stand up to uh, a six five Pile to Shredder. And then you're forced to sort of play damage control the following turn. So he might be leaning towards trying to stop the bleeding right now by playing one of his taunts, either the Druid of the Claw or the Sludge Belcher, I would lean towards the Sludge Belcher because it seems a little bit more awkward. Um, yeah, and it looks like he's gonna do that. It's gonna make the Ancient of Lore come out a turn later, but he can't really risk going too hard. And this is a weird turn because you would think, oh yeah, just Pile to Treader and then Earth Shock. But then he's not really making use of the Power Mace. Yeah. Say, um, Maybe pile the shredder into the sludge belcher and then uh, earth shock it and save your power mace. Uh, maybe for like your Anoyotron and just lay Anoyotron and totem up. He's looking at crackle here. Crackle earth shock could be, a, could be a move as well. Or maybe he'll just roll high on the crackle and then he can just kill the power mace. Let's see. Oh, it's oh. <laughs> wow. Oh. Never lucky. That's the perfect crackler. Oleg is so upset about that. And you can't blame him. A 6-5 pilot shredder protected by an Anoyotron. Doomhammer next turn. He's, he's uh, taking notes from from D2 as well. After a bad play, he takes a sip. Yeah, he's, a, again, a, a very well hydrated player. His sips per minute will never be as high as, as D2. One of his greatest feats as a player. One of his greatest accomplishments. <laughs> It'll be his legacy. Sips per minute. His SPM. The Whirling Zapomatic as well. Could be such a devastating card. <laughs> it, when he's got an Anoyotron up. Yeah. This is a... You're not going to really find a, a more solid turn to play Doomhammer as well. It's safe. <laughs> he's hiding behind this Anoyotron here. Um, he could put 11 damage on, which is just... He's just going to start to pile on the damage. He's on like a rock biter draw to, uh, to pretty much close out the game. Yeah, and he can get through taunts as well with the Earth Shock. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Doesn't even need to trade away for this Lothab. Can just push the damage in. And this is this is a really tough turn for Oliak. I mean, he can ping off the Divine Shield and then clear the Anoyotron, put up a taunt, but. He can't, yeah, he can't do both of those things. He would have to do the Shredder instead of the Druid of the Claw if he wanted to clear the Neutron. I don't think he can clear the Neutron this turn. I think he has to put up the Druid of the Claw. Oh, he's covering over the hero power. Oh, he's going to go for it. Yeah. Okay, he's, yeah, he's going to use the Wrath. I'm. Mm. He's, he's going to clear off the Powder Shredder. Yeah, this is the way to go for it. Um, This is... Probably the way to take the most immediate damage off the board, but it's still a little bit rough. He's going to have Taunt for next turn. He's also going to have Hero Power next turn or a way to heal. Uh, but this is just giving the Shaman so much initiative here. And it's so yeah. tough because it's allowing them to build a board in preparation for what you're about to put out. At the same time, this is punished less by cards like Urshock uh, because you're, you'd are you be in more danger with a six, a six attack creature on the board than you would any other way. Let's see, he's got 4, 5, 6, 12, 13. He can't, he can't heal out of lethal range. 
Yeah, he can't even. Yeah, that's yeah. just what I was calculating as well. So he can taunt, and that that's uh, yeah, that's gonna be it. Well, he can. Oh, he's gonna charge. No, no, okay. no. Yeah, yeah. You have to charge in that situation. Yeah. So he has a lot of outs here for force and for lethal. That's not one of them. Nope. So he's. But I guess, boom. Can, I guess he was a really doctor boom. Yeah, he, does, he doesn't get lethal. I guess he'll just play Dr. Boom instead. Well, that's going to be it for Oleg. So, Borson going up 2-1. Gets a win with the Shaman, so he's going to have to go back to this Warrior now. And now it's going to be two chances for Borson to get a win with this Grim Patron Combo Warrior against the Druid of Oleg or the Warlock. All right. Wow. Uh, Warlock, it has a chance. Uh, I like it's. I think it's a really close matchup against Zoo. Um, Druid, I don't think it's as good uh, because there's not really many ways for you to combo. But a lot of times you can just if so against some other classes, you could use the uh, their creatures to combo some of your your own creatures. Uh, but against Druid, that's not really going to be possible. Yeah. Uh, because against Druid, they're usually playing a large creature every turn. And they threaten to kill you a lot sooner than other classes if you don't aren't able to clear the board early. Whereas against Zoo, sometimes you can bounce your Grim Pagents off of their small creatures in order to give yourself a bigger board in order to close the game out quicker. So it's a little bit weird because you, you sort of want your opponent to have lots of small creatures because they're easier for you to clear and also it helps you combo your own. Uh, so I'd imagine... Um, oh, actually, I was going to say Oleg <laughs> is probably going to go with the Druid, but he actually chooses the Warlock. Uh, we've seen all Zoo today, all some traditional Zoo uh, with Imp Gang Boss thrown in. We've seen some Demon Zoo hybrids with Nalganis and uh, Bane of Dooms. So I'm yeah. curious to see what Oleg is going to bring. We haven't seen any traditional Handlock yet. No, well, I mean, this is that's all the deck list for the tournament, so we're not going to see any anything that isn't a variation on Zoo in Warlock, and that's such a departure from the position we were in just a couple of weeks ago. Unless unless Oleg running traditional hand like we haven't seen Did him. We not, like oh him. yeah, sorry, we, yeah, we haven't actually seen his Warlock yet. I thought we had. So this is the one chance for your Handlock fans. We'll see. We're going to see obviously Jab and Tice with their uh, Malganis Doctor Boom versions of Zoo. <laughs> In I the got, next round. I was playing some handlock uh, last night when I should have been sleeping because I had to wake up for at 4 a.m. this morning to start this cast, but um, I actually lost to a zoo warlock who played Sacrificial Pact. I got to that point in the game where you're able to clear the board and then you play Draxis next turn to sort of lock the zoo player out of the game. And I was like, okay, I win. Great. The game's over. And then you played Sacrificial Pact. And I was like, what? Like that card, that card used to be a staple in Handlock. Handlock used to be so popular on ladder, and Jaraxxus was a must have card in almost every single Handlock deck. That Warlocks would play Sacrificial Pact. And I think you might get your wish here. That was one of the first chapters in Raynad's autobiography when he very first started streaming when he was playing Warlock. How he became the Salt King was because one day he got Sacrificial Pacted by another Handlock when he was playing Handlock. And from that day forward. Well, it looks like you're going to get your wish here, TJ. It's going to be at least some kind of uh, later game Warlock. We see a Zombie Chow, Sludge Belchers. We saw Double Sun Fury. So we'll see what kind of deck this is. But yeah, we know what you're seeing from the war Warrior. We did see another card, which was the Dread Corsair, which is a little bit uh, less common, I think, in these combo Warrior decks. Hmm. I'm trying, to think, I'm trying to think how Grim Page and Warrior wins in this situation. And it's really tough. Uh, they have to set up one turn kills before the handlock can get out a wall. Which is really hard. This is a really creature heavy deck. Um, I, it's a Grim Page and Warrior, but it's not. it doesn't really look like it's too much of a combo-y deck. It seems like it's more of like a mid-range, very board focused Grim Page and Warrior deck. Um, there is combos that you can make, but we haven't even seen the Warsong Commanders in Mulligans or in his hand. Yeah, that's right. I can't imagine he wouldn't be running them, though. Yeah, as you say, I, I think those pretty much are staples of this combo warrior deck, but we will see. 
uh, do see a mountain giant in hand for Oleg. So this is pretty much handlock. Uh, we see the, the giants, obviously, the taunt givers, all the signs of handlock. It's the first time we've seen it. And yeah, pretty slow anti aggro deck with the zombie chat. Yeah. Yeah, I think he can afford to use the Defender of Argus early here to be able to deny some draws. Uh, of course, you do want that the wall in the late game. But plays on curve, able to clear off the Acolyte of Pain while denying a draw. So not so bad. Yep, double Dark Bomb as well. So this is kind of a classic GVG handlock. It's pretty exciting. I haven't seen the I haven't seen handlock in so long in tournaments. Good old traditional handlock. Not only that, it's nearly all golden. Um, we don't get to see if it's all golden yet because he didn't have, he wasn't on the coin. But uh, that's doesn't have golden mountain giant. Oh oh yeah, mountain giant's not golden. Interesting. We talked about this yesterday. If you if you not got all golden, don't play any golden. Yeah yeah. It's, has the golden hero though it's just it's a strategical move because well unless if you it's mostly of a single card if you don't have both goldens don't play any goldens of any single card because again if you're trying to min max um over the course of a series uh you can give your opponent information by playing a golden mountain giant and then later on a non-golden mountain giant and later on in the series it'll tell them that you have two now, most likely they can assume that information, but if you're really trying to min-max... <laughs> oh, no! He was going to... I think he was going to coin Thoris in that turn. That's what he was looking at. And that mana wraith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see what Twitch chat thinks of that. That is the face of a very sad, sad man. And so, uh, if Raynard is the Salt King, then right now Forsen is the Salt Prince. Yeah, or the Salt Queen. Well, I, I wasn't going to cast any of but <laughs> that is possible. Yeah, that's that's really rough, because that would have been a really high value Emperor Thorson. Um, he had a lot of cards in his hand. Uh, a lot of the cards that he did have in his hand were combo pieces. Uh, there is the Warsaw Commander. So he had Warsaw Commander, uh, Cool Taskmaster, Frothing Berserker. It would have made his combos come a turn sooner, which would have been so, so important in this handlock matchup, who relies on like getting big walls in order to, to stop aggro, who are doing the damage to themselves, trying to to stop everything, so. I think you I think you want to leave this mana wreath alive here. I don't know, because it also affects you, and you want to be able to play on your curve as well. I, I really don't agree with that, because he paid a five, he had six mana, You're also giving and played a, more, a five mana creature. You're also giving him more battle rage value by leaving a damaged creature on the board. I don't know. I, I like keeping the Mana Wraith alive as long as you possibly can afford to, just to mess up your opponent. If you can play well with the Mana Wraith on the board, and you're obviously playing a little bit less efficiently, but like if he's just going to play the Lotheb that turn, I think you just play the Lotheb and leave it alive and hope that, you know, he has... Obviously, Forsen has, uh, has lots of cards in hand that he'd be looking to play off the Thoris, and if he could get a little bit... Let you you know you basically negate the uh, Thorison value on the creatures. Yeah. So. Doctor Boom. Yeah, that's. I don't think this game this deck runs big game hunter, but it does run execute, which could be that could be a pretty big top deck though. <laughs> There's two things he wants to execute here, and he doesn't actually have both. This is difficult. So you don't want to give away too many of your combo pieces. Um, he has to try and calculate to see if he can see if he has lethal here. This is true. <laughs> There's so much damage. Uh, he only has one whirlwind effect, and the uh, the bombs make it um, so that there's a chance that his frothing berserker could get killed. Uh, but he does have a lot of damage. Uh, Warson commander, frothing berserker is four. Uh, Uncivil Ghoul is 5, Cool Taskmaster is 6, and that's all he could play. I guess the coin, so he'd only have 2 more mana. Um, so it's... His Frothing Berserker would have... Let's see, 7... No, it would only have 14 attack. So he's pretty far off from it, but you always have to... When you're playing 
a combo board like this and there's no taunt on the board and you have that many combo pieces in your hand, you have to make sure you calculate every turn. He was pretty far off, but yeah, with the bombs, if he had good bombs there, he could actually have gotten that Frog Berserker, I think, up to... Oh, man. 18 attack? No, not quite. Not quite. 14 attack, <laughs> I think, was the highest. Well, he just plays the Shredder and the Dread Corsair here. And... There's quite a few responses for Oleg. He does have Double Dark Bomb. He has uh, Silence. Not sure he obviously wants to use those, but they are available to him. He's going to just go with the bombs here, see where the bombs go. Oh, one damage on the Shredder. That's pretty unfortunate. Yeah, this might make him rethink his plan. Because if he throws a second Dark Bomb in and it hits the face, then he's going to be throwing a lot of damage into... Okay. All right. He clears it okay. off. <laughs> Mad Scientist. It's it's a pretty average body. Two two is it's about the average that you'll get from Pod Shredder, but that scientist you don't want to get much value from that. Um, Dark Bomb here is probably a smart choice because he doesn't want to waste that seven damage. But what's he gonna do with the rest of his six mana? Sylvanas. Sylvanas uh, or Belcher. <laughs> yeah. Belcher just to be safe. Cause he took a long time thinking about his last turn, so you know he has a lot of combo pieces in his hand that are Reduced in cost from Emperor Thorson. So you're always scared. Just a little bit. Just a little scared. Well, once again, he's looking at what he has. But he needs to get through this Sludge Belcher. I'm not sure. That's such a problematic card for a deck like this. Because you don't have silence. You don't have big creatures. Don't have a lot of direct damage. Usually Sludge Belchers are actually pretty good. Usually, sometimes you like to see Sludge Belchers, but only if you have Death Bite. Like, if you have Death Bite, Sludge yeah. Belcher is like, oh, yeah, because then you can kill, especially Grim Patron, you throw down Grim Patron, kill with the Death Bite, and then if you have Charge, you throw your second, your other Grim Patron into that one two, and then get another one, so. Um, All right, well, he does top deck a Fiery War Axe off the Slam, and that's pretty great, because that's going to be able to deal with the rest of this Sludge Belcher body. He might coin the Unstable Ghoul here. Huh. Yeah, he's going to have to if he wants to kill a Dr. Boom, or guard his Frothing Berserker. But yeah, well, I think I think that's what he's going for. That's his whole hand right there. I mean, he has Battle Rage next turn to refill, as long as a damage, damaged creature survive, but... I don't know if anything's going to survive here. Um, he can Dark Bomb, the, he can throw his Dr. Boom in, then Dark Bomb the Frothing Berserker. The only thing that'd be left is the Warsong Commander. He wouldn't be able to kill it, but... Hmm. And that would give him the opportunity to maybe play his own Thorison. So probably as good a turn as you're going to get. When he's emptied his hand, and you know there's, you can be pretty confident of how little pressure is is maybe going to come in. I think you, like you say, I think you dart bomb the frothing, you kill the unstable go with the seven seven, and then you play your own Emperor Thorson. Though that's not, not an option anymore because he life tapped. You do the different the other way around. You would throw the Doctor Boom into the unstable ghoul and then dark bomb the frothing berserker. Because it keeps your Doctor Boom alive. Yeah. Uh, man, this is risky though. <laughs> I mean, there's there is no combo pieces left, but he's not putting up a wall in that situation. I mean, he can, which he, he might be scared and be and feel like he has to. Okay, silence works just as well. Because I was gonna say you can't really leave that Warsong Commander up uncontested like that without a taunt. Yeah, just because the they even if it was just Grim Patron and like Inner Rage in his hand. There's just so much that he could do with that Warzone Commander. Yeah. I like the silence here. Yeah. And so if you're going to silence then you need to send for a protector as well. There's no reason not to. Alright, so Battle Rage into something pretty substantial is going to be uh, really the only way out here for Forsen. He's at 12 health. He's taking a lot of damage. Ooh. It's too well, late. The silence, the silence on that Warzone Commander. Pretty crucial, actually. Yeah. Because, oh man, he could have uh, summoned a Grim Patron, Cruel Taskmastered it. Cleared the 7-5. Cleared the 7-5, throw everything in, yeah. 
Yeah, that would have been really huge. So actually, the silence on the Watson Commander really great. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. He might actually have to tank seven damage. Seven health will be it at the end. But he'll have to armor up. This is a really low health total. Actually, uh, Jaraxxus is lethal, right? No. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so Jaraxxus is lethal. Uh, as, 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 assuming Uli exceeds it, he's going to have lethal there. <laughs> There's no way you can't see that. I don't know. I've seen people miss some, miss some lethals before. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, yeah. Okay, so that's... He realizes. Yeah. Forson realizes that that would be an issue, so he's clearing out the board. Drake doesn't really matter at this point. Do you just Jaraxxus anyway? With one card in hand, with one card in hand and a fiery warx available, what is there? Is there anything possible that he could do? Uh, I might be inclined to just uh, um, build up a wall here, but Jaraxxus Jaraxxus would deny a draw, but it would make him lose two health, and he wouldn't have any taunts up. Like he wouldn't have a, a wall up. Molten Giant Sun Fury Protector. Um, yeah, no, it would deny a draw. I like that play better. Molten Giant Sun Fury Protector. Because either way, you're still denying a draw. This way, you have a wall up and you're not losing the two health. Okay, well, let's see what he goes with here. He does with the Twilight Drake as well. Uh, he, wow, okay, he's going for the Drake and That's the Forest. That's so bold. That's so bold. Is he just going to go face? I guess it doesn't really matter at the end because there's not really any way that he can do 17 damage with two cards. Um, I mean, I guess if one of them's Battle Rage and he can draw into something extra. He need like Grim Patient plus a Whirlwind Effect plus a Charge. Uh, which is possible. There is a possibility if he does... He has one draw from the Acolyte of Pain. He could draw from that into Battle Rage. Commanding shout is not going to help him too much. Well, it might. He needs second Warsaw Commander. All right, well, that's the commanding shout. <laughs> second Warsaw Commander could actually allow him to clear the board. He can draw two cards here. There oh, it is! Oh, oh my god! Warsaw Commander, Grim Patron, Commanding Shout. He clears the board. Oh my god. This is the dream combo. Because Commanding Shout will make it so Grim Patron doesn't die. So technically it's getting damage. So he's just going to summon Grim Patron after Grim Patron. And he has enough room on the board to summon all the Grim Patrons and be able to completely clear the board. Oh my god. And then Battle Rage next turn. That's really crazy. He's going to draw, what, seven cards next turn while Battle yeah. Rage? He needs, <laughs> he needs a Hellfire. If he oh draws, if he draws Hellfire Shadow Plane, yeah. he's still okay. Um, but he needs those cards, and Force is thinking it, if it's right to attack. But there's no reason not to attack because yeah, so. Molten Giant plus Shadow Flame just screws you over regardless. I mean, he can Molten Giant Twilight Drake taunt up. Or Drake. <laughs> he can Giant. actually, he can actually Drake. Molten Giant Sylvanas taunt up and play Twilight Drake. Well, he played Twilight Drake first, of course. Um, he has to weigh that against tapping. So I think, you, I think tapping here is the right play, because you can draw into Hellfire. Um, it depends if he's running Hellfire. We haven't. I mean, we haven't seen any. We haven't seen any spe like spells. He like has Shadow. to be running Hellfire. There's no way he's. I don't think there's any way he's not running Hellfire. I just I've never I've, seen a traditional. I'm just really stuff. aware that we haven't seen any of the spells from Handlock. Yes, we haven't seen a single Siphon Soul, a single Shadow Flame, a single Hellfire. So, what of those is he running? Most most Handlocks nowadays don't run Siphon Soul. Um, yeah. I imagine he's, since he's running Zombie Child, he's running uh, two Hellfires, one Shadow Flame. That seems to be pretty standard. Uh, but he risks not tapping. Um, probably a smart idea. He is going to be able to create a really big wall here. And since he puts the, the taunt on the Sylvanas. I don't know. 
battle Probably rage, though. So. Oh my god! Battle rage, seven cards. Oh, that those ones aren't good. He's got to find going. lethal somewhere in here. He's got Grim eight Patron mana. is good. Execute. There we go. So you can draw one more card with the uh, um, with the acolyte of pain as well. Um, the, I okay. There's yeah. There's lethal in here somewhere. Yeah, with the he's got second Grim Patron plus Whirlwind and Warsong Commander on the board. The only thing that he has to do is not have the those, Warsong Commander yeah, stolen. Yeah, not have the Warsong Commander stolen or um, clear his. Okay, now the best way to do it is to clear his board first, get as many Grim Patrons as possible, and and then and so it gives them all charge first since it's a battle cry. When they spawn, it gives them charge. So that way, even if the Warsong Commander is stolen, yeah. he'll still have enough Grim Pages to do it. So this is actually really good sequencing here. Yeah, attack with the Acolyte first is, is pretty important as well. Yeah. He's, been the Dread, he's got the Dread Corsair as well. That's, that could be crucial. So the Dread Corsair it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely lethal, no matter how you swing it, because he's going to get two Grim Pages here. He's going to have enough damage, um, no matter what gets stolen. That's one of the Grim Pages going over, I think. Yep. Yeah. So that is going to be it. Wow, what a win from Forsen. Crazy. That Oh my god. That draw. That's insane. That's nuts! That is The Warsaw Commander draw was absolutely insane. That, literally, if he did not draw into second Warsaw Commander, the game was over. Yeah. Um, that was the literally the only card that would have saved him in that matchup. And, and he was so unlucky earlier in the game, like with the Mana Wraith and stuff. This game was not going Forsen's way, and then... He just draws the second Warsong Commander and everything turns around. Yeah. Such a tough break for Oleg, but Forsen is going to our quarterfinals. I'm sure there's a lot of happy people out there excited to see Forsen moving on. Um, Oleg had a pretty good showing. I think he played really well. Um, not many mistake, not any mistakes from him. And it's just a little unfortunate that both those Punchline Esports Club guys uh, did fall in the first round of the round of 16. But hopefully we'll be seeing more from those guys in the future because I know they're strong players. And uh, bold enough to bring the only player to bring traditional handlock out of 16 players. 16 players, I think of which 11 brought Warlock. And he was the only one who brought traditional handlock. So really bold move. I think he played it well. But the power of the Forsen just overcame. The, the power to draw into Warsong Commander at the right turn that he needed overcame. But Forsen played really well. The sequencing on that last turn was actually really important. And yeah. uh, he played it just about as the, as the best that he could have. So... I'm uh, really happy to see him move on. Absolutely. We're going to take a, a quick break before we get into our quarterfinals. Our first quarterfinal is going to be Jab versus Dog. Remember, while we're away, you can chat, you can type uh, exclamation mark raffle into the chat to get the link for the raffle to win 20 Hearthstone packs. You can donate to Child's Play, which is what we're all here for. Here for. There's a button at the bottom. Donate to Child's Play. Child's Play, of course, a charity which buys games and consoles for kids uh, with cancer and a low term illness to make their stay in hospital or even the end of the days a little bit, a little bit better. You can also uh, make sure you tune in for the KPL every week, Tuesdays and Wednesdays from this coming week at 6 p.m. CET with Noxious and Lothar. Uh, we're pretty far into the KPL now. We're, all, we're over halfway getting into the last final weeks to find out who's going to compete in the playoffs at the beginning of May for $15,000. But uh, we're going to take a, a quick break now once we get everything set up. But uh, TJ, I'm still reeling from that Grim Patron. It's the second Grim Patron deck we've seen, and it feels almost like a custom Grim Patron deck as well. Cards like Piloted Shredder, Dread Corsair, uh, not what you would expect in the Grim Patron Warrior. Things like Commanding Shout as well. I've, I've actually, uh, speaking to some of the some pros about Grim Patron Warrior, uh, one player who had spoken to a UK player, a UK pro, Sotl, was saying that he'd, he played a lot of Grim Patron Warrior and had a 70% win rate with it on ladder. But for him, commanding shout was straight up bad because it just didn't achieve what you needed to with the it's combos. But... It's inconsistent. Yeah, Forsen really made it work though. <laughs> yeah, it was really, really impressive finish. Cool to watch too. Uh, those types of combos are uh, fun to play, fun to watch. So I look forward to seeing that deck uh, later on today and maybe even tomorrow if he makes it that far. If he makes it that that far, well, let's take a look at what we've got coming up for you. We've got our our top eight is decided and. Uh, you would say a lot of experienced players. This is, I have to say, one of the most stacked top eights I've seen in a tournament in a long time in terms of experienced players. We got Jab versus Dog coming up in the uh, kind of the battle of the two maybe lesser known pros, but guys who are regarded among the pro scene as very strong players. 
Uh, these guys are both looking for a big breakout opportunity. Hyped versus Chalky, that's one I'm looking forward to as well. And you can we can talk a little bit about your love for George Hyped Magazzini uh, when we get there. Big fan. Tide, Tides versus Gara for me is possibly, I mean, that could be a final of any tournament anywhere, couldn't it? Those yeah. are two of the most decorated players. That's just insane. And then we're going to have Tice versus Forsen as well. So we're going to take a quick break. We're going to be back in 10 minutes with Jam versus Dog in our first quarterfinal. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Kingwin for Charity Easter.